All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is a pick and place a pneumatic driven system. So what I did is I pre-built the, the PLC logic so we can actually talk through it. But first I'm gonna show you how the machine works, right? So I'm gonna hit the start button real quick. And when I hit the start button, you'll notice that it is in state one uh, right here, which is in ladder four, I have the, the yellow light flashing, right? So for 10 seconds, the yellow light flashes. And then we're gonna we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the tour open so you can actually see the full range of the machine. So what it does is it actually picks up one uh, piece and then assembles it. Let's go over here and you can see it puts it on a tray and then it waits for the second piece, the second gantry to put in the second piece, and then that makes a complete part. Now once the complete part is picked up, the tray comes back out, it delivers it to the exit conveyor, then the exit conveyor will allow it to run out. Now all this is going to be done with a state machine. Again, a state machine is, is basically a finite amount of um, uh, basically states or functions that need to, uh, need to be used to actually have the machine work properly, right? So in this case, I use 15 states, I believe. So the finite number of the state's machine would be 15, right? So I'm using 15 states to accomplish a goal to actually make the product or to actually make the machine accomplish its goal of making the product and doing it safely. Along with the matter of fact, it's like if I open a door over here or if I hit the stop button, it will stop the machine. So again, when I come down to it and when it comes down to actually the way things work, let's actually look at, at Let's actually look again. So and you've seen state one right here, right? So if I hit, let's just say for instance, I open a door, right? So all I gotta do is click on this and it will actually open the door. And when it opens the door, what it's gonna do is actually shut the machine down because that's a safety protocol, right? So let's open the door and you can see that if we open the door, we can see that the door is open. It forces the state machine to a zero. That's a safety protocol. That means somebody opened the door, the, the machine needs to completely isolate down to a safe state. Then somebody can be in there and actually doing said function, whatever they open the door to do, and the machine is safe. You can see that, right? So when that, let's just shut the door. Now the machine will not start back up by itself without having a start button. So let's actually go down to floor view and let's roll. Let's actually walk over here to the start stop station and let's actually start the machine again. So let's start the machine. Now we're going to come back up here and let's come. And now you can see the machine has, has been started. You can actually see the logic has it as it's starting. You can see the light flashing and then it will go green to the next state. You can see I have my basically my parts coming in. And then as my parts are coming in, now my first gantry comes in and picks the part up. When it picks the part up, then it will drop the first gantry, will drop the empty part, then the empty part comes back in the tray, then the second gantry drops the uh, center or the, the completed piece, and then as soon as the completed piece is there, it will then deliver the part out. Now, um, as you see, I already had a part right there, so you see it kind of messed up. Um, but again, when it comes down to it, we can easily program that scenario out. That was just like an operator opening a door. Again, you can have a reset or a reject scenario in that case. <clears throat> in this one, we'll watch this one completely so you'll see the gantry Gantry first drops it off, then the second gantry drops the, the centerpiece off, then it comes over and uh, issues the tray out. When the tray comes out, then the first gantry picks it back up, drops it back off, it then starts the conveyor as soon as it, it, it doesn't actually start the conveyor until the product is on it. All right, so let's, let's come over here and talk about this. All right, so in state four, I turn on getting the uh, getting each part up to its actual photo eye. So what I'm saying is I'm saying, okay, so once, if you look at uh, basically rung six, if it's equal to three, then I wanna turn on, I wanna latch in both the actual parts coming in and let's get let's let it go to state three and you can see that actually happening so now it's going to come back in state four and you can see both of these are on and they're going to run until in state four until both switches are made when both switches are made they're going to come over here to then it's going to change to the next state which is five and then what state five does is moves the gantry one and two to their set positions 
So gantry one is the, the first gantry is the one that does the most work. And that's the one that picks basically, you know, picks up the empty part and picks up the completed part and then puts it on the, in the, uh, the actual X conveyor. Now, again, when the, the second gantry does the least amount of work, but it does the, the, you know, the center part. So it is assembling a part. So let's actually see this. So in state five, it moves the gant, uh, both the parts. Then in state six, what it does is it comes down and delivers the part. Okay. So let's actually watch state six right here. And <clears throat> let's actually wait till we get to that point. Um, now we're on 14 where basically the machine is running a little, you know, faster than I can actually explain the way the logic works. Cause again, a state machine is a really fast way to accomplish a goal. All right, so we're in state five. We're about in state six. State six is picking the parts. Now it comes over here and delivers the parts. State seven. Then in state eight, it comes. It basically moves the gantry to the set position. And again, so the gantry moving into a set position. Basically, what that's doing is is going to be like an analog value. Okay, so everything on this machine is actually pneumatic, except for the actual gantry movement. Now, again, that comes down to actually um, having that in the X or, or a positive or negative movement. Basically, it's an analog value. It's nothing more. It's not like an axis or a servo or nothing like that. It's very, very, very simple. Uh, like a lin Think about it like a linear actuator. Okay, so then we come over here and in state 9, basically, we're saying the cylinder should go up. We're giving it time to come up. We're going to retract. We're going to do the first retract. As soon as it retracted, basically we we are indicating that it it did get the retracted uh, right here. We did indicate that it did, did get the the tray did retract the cylinder did retract from its actual uh, read switch right. And then we're going to state ten, and then state ten we basically move the the second gantry back to its position, okay. And then we make sure that we let it down, okay. So then we come over here, and then it's state eleven. We're saying that cylinder two should go up and then it should go back to its set home position, which it is now, right? So what that's gonna do, and I'll show you the exact point where we were just talking about. So in state uh, 10 right here, where we talked about in, in rung 13, it's gonna come over here, uh, gantry two is gonna come over here to place the part, it's like it's doing now. Then it's gonna come over here and move back to its home position, which it just did. Okay, and then in state 12, what it's going to do is it's basically going to move gantry one to its set position to actually, you know, pick up the actual part and then to the actual position that it needs to deliver it. Okay, so in state uh, 13, it's going to retract the tray. We're going to retract the tray. We're going to raise the part or we're going to raise the cylinder one more time to get the cylinder out of the way to get it basically to a home position in the state 14. We're turning the exit conveyor off. Then we're moving the gantry to a position. And then that's the first gantry. Again, that first gantry right here. And then we're waiting till that gantry gets in position to its actual position. And then we're actually doing, we're telling it to go to second down. And then we're turning off the suction. So we have suction involved as well. And then as soon as it hits state 15, it basically the cylinder, um, cylinder one will raise again. As soon as it raises, we give it time to raise, and then we turn the exit conveyor on. Now, again, the exit conveyor does not turn is not running when we place the part. That's very important, so the product does not get damaged. So, as you can see, and then we're, we're basically saying for my um, basically for my OPC to work correctly, what I'm doing is I'm I'm actually calling different functions and telling different outputs to come on at different times. So these are the actual bits going to my OPC. You can actually see that. Um, and again, that goes into the um, OPC. We can see the actual, uh, the view, the IO as it's running. So let's actually get to a point where you can see it. Let's actually come back here and let you watch the whole process running again. Now, again, I'm running, I'm wa watching the IO so my analog, I'm commanding my analogs over here. You can see that. And I can look at my analogs over here to see what the actual position of those are. And as they're, they're actually running, you can see those, right? So you can see that this is coming in 
and gantry you can see now gantry one is running and then the cylinder comes down. Now the cylinder again is just a command, like a solenoid on and off, but again, we're giving it time based upon the rate of travel from the pneumatic actual act, you know, the cylinder for, for, for the air to actually get travel through the solenoid and then go and, you know, for the cylinder to stroke down or either stroke up. That's basically what we're doing. So again, when it comes to that, that's just a new uh, digital input or digital output, right? So that's basically what we're using. You can see that the tray right here, I can see the tray is, uh, it is using the read switch, which my inputs are on my uh, right hand side. You can see the tray is fully re uh, extended. Okay, so it's advanced out. Now when the tray goes back, when you watch this, so, so that it's gonna place the part on, then the tray will move back. This will be my read switch when it's back right here, showing that the cylinder is fully back. At that point, the, the cylinder is fully back, it comes over here, and then I can indicate to my state machine what I need to do. So this is a really, really good tool to use to show how to program an actual machine and have it fully functional to have a product system work the way it should work, right? I mean, and when you think about it, it's a challenging thing to do, right? So how would you go about doing it? Would you just do regular ladder logic? Would you do a state machine? Would you do something that's, you know, you know different out of the norm um you know basically because of the simple fact of the way it should run personally i like to use a state machine because it gives me a process that i can step through to make sure that i'm doing something adequately i'm achieving the goal of actually what the machine should do and i'm doing it in a set number the lowest set possible number of wet you know processes it can do right so you can see my inputs and outputs coming on you can also see this side by side. Now I'm gonna change my outputs, or I'm gonna take my view IO off. And again, I'm using Easy PLC's machine simulator. Um, and again, that's um, a very, very powerful tool. But I'm using that with an APC, right? So I'm using that with tying in with an emulator. Now you can use a real processor if you'd like. You don't have to use an emulator. I'm just choosing to use an emulator. I'm using slot. Uh, eight right here and then what I'm doing is through my OPC I can go to my DDE, DDE OPC and look at my topics and I'm using I called it air okay now you can see that that is locked right now that means I have conductivity to my OPC that means I have uh, conductivity to my actual machine so let's actually open the gate right here and let's actually restart this real quick so you can see when I have conductivity. So now I have no conductivity to my OPC. So the DDD OPC topic should have no lock, right? It's not locked whatsoever because it's not being used. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my file. I'm gonna go to open driver configuration. I already have it preloaded because I save all my drivers to save time. And then I'm gonna load it up. And then I'm gonna hit exit and start. At that point, okay, at that point right here, we're not gonna start, machines not start, but let's go ahead and check our OPC D, uh, DDE OPC topic, right? And really it's an OPC topic, that's all we're doing, is make sure it, it's locked, it has good connectivity. We have a second reading down here that says driver connected, all right? So let's actually come over here and let's come right here, get in personal view, and let's use our arrows to walk up, and then come over here and walk back, We'll hit exit one time and then we'll hit the start button and the start button again everything synchronizes it goes home and then it basically a 10 second 10 seconds after the the process work or has been started everything starts so it's giving you kind of like a little warning light to say hey the process is starting and then after it starts then the machine starts its process so you can easily see uh, while well, with the ground view at that point Let's come over here and click aerial view so you can see the process running. All right, so you can see the process actually running and let's shorten that down so you can see that step by step, this is working through this process. It's working through my finite state machine that uh, again, what I've chose to build and chose to use for, um, and I'm, I'm using Studio 5000. So again, this is Studio 5000 and is version 31. Now you can use this on any version you want to. 
Um, the logic is the logic. It's just ladder logic, basically. It's a finite state machine. Really, really, really simple process. But again, if you've seen any of my videos, especially the, any of my Easy PLC videos, where I use the Easy PLC's machine simulator, you've noticed that I use a finite state machine because when you go through and use, and I use a different set, um, different de depending upon how I'm actually programming it, I might actually use a different way of doing the state machine, right? So I may use um, like uh, indirect addressing instead of this, just a simple move instruction. Right, you see these simple move instructions. I'm waiting to something get like it gets into that state. Like in right now, it's in state nine. It's in state ten right now. So in it's state eleven. Or let's see, the state. Uh, this is in state fourteen. So it does move kind of kind of quick. But let's actually watch this real quick. So I'm saying if it's in that state, and let's wait. Let's wait till this get in, gets in the state. So in state four, these functions are happening. So this run is active. Then it comes over here. Actually, I started that and edit right quick. So, and you can see that as soon as the equal, that state is equal to the state that it's in, it's going to do these functions. Once it does the function and that right here, then it's going to move it down to the next state. Then in the next state, once it's equal to that, it's going to do these functions. Then it's going to come over here. And as soon as all of them are done, it's going to move it into the next state. Again, this is a very, very, very simple, easy way to program to make sure your machine will do its said functions within its said process. Now, again, it is well thought out. And again, when it comes down to it, you take it piece by piece and step by step. And that's how a finite state machine works again. And then you can build in extra little things like safety protocols different things like that, like I have the light coming on when I'm first starting the machine to kind of give a, a indication that machine is in a starting state. So um, when that said, and I also have the, if the door opens like right now, the machine completely stops, right? That's a safety, right? That's a safety aspect. So again, when it comes to it, you build in safety aspects as well to your actual controls, right? So um, with all that said, I just wanted to show you another simple scenario of using a finite state machine, um, actually using uh, Studio 5000, using the Easy PLC machine simulator and using the whole control system the way it should be used so you can get a full comprehension and a full understanding of how powerful these tools can be to help you educate yourself with growing and basically you know, challenging yourself every single day to you know use what you know or if you're trying to learn it learn these processes right learn the processes and then you can challenge yourself on different machines to see how they work right easy plc's machine simulator has over i believe like don't quote me on this but i think it's 25 to 30 machines he's constantly adding machines to this this was a new machine that was requested by a customer um, or by a basically, uh, so, you know, somebody just like me and you and basically requested a, a challenging machine just like this, a pneumatic driven machine, because that was their environment. So he built this for that and then he did an update and sent it out. Very, very cool tool to actually use and challenge yourself and to learn and see how things are used. I use it daily. Um, again, when I want to challenge, I want to challenge myself to this or that. Um, when it comes to control logics or when it comes to ladder logic or maybe even I, if I want to use a different language Maybe I don't want to use ladder logic. Maybe I want to use sequential function chart or, or Structured text or whatever the case may be But again when it comes down to it, I just want to show you another simple example of how things were done Hopefully you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys on the next one